Hey, welcome to The Conversation. You're listening to Andy Mason, and this is Authentic Conversations Around the Messy Intersection of Faith, Family, and Business. And it's brought to you by heaveninbusiness.com, where you can find a ton of resources to help you grow and your walk with God at work and engage in the well-being of the city that you serve. So this episode is an update really from two previous episodes, 166 and 167. And it's really, in some ways, you could say I'm telling on myself. It's wanting to bring you inside and behind the curtain to how I do what I do and what I'm learning in the process. And my hope, prayer, desire is that this will accelerate you and your own partnership with God at work, hearing his voice and getting the results. So a little bit of background, context. Uh, we've obviously, Heaven of Business is a business. It's a single member LLC based in Delaware. And there's some taxation and legal benefits for that. It was set up just like that. And we've been happily growing. I mean, in the last two years, I have been delighted with a shift in focus from a lot of activities and events into more focused, more intentional and smaller activities, smaller things, which have been primarily around discipleship. And we call it advisory services and mastermind groups and retreats. And there's been smaller scale workshops where we're talking maybe 50 people, max 100. And then we've done one annual conference a year. So it's been fantastic. I've seen the fruit of really accelerated learning and growth of the people that we're walking with. And it's been an absolute pleasure and delight. It's kind of like, do I really get to do this? This is this is fun. And so you're asking the question, what does those results look like? Well, here's, I would say, the evidence. The evidence is not always, you're never guaranteed to succeed financially the Bible never says that's going to be guaranteed. It does guarantee challenge and difficulty, but there's some non-negotiables. And one of those is the presence and the power of God. Um, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. So that's really what I'm looking for as a telltale. Isaiah 55 says, you'll go out with joy and be led forth with peace. So I'm looking at measure of joy, measure of peace regardless of the circumstance. Otherwise, any martyr, you would say they've failed. No, they've actually succeeded, but it looks very, very different. So for me, and as I'm navigating and saying, I've had felt significant success in walking with some business people. What has happened? Well, here's a couple of little highlights. So I've wrote down here, this was evidenced by an increased measure of peace regardless of the circumstance. Client going through crazy, crazy stuff where there's an employee being uh, investigated for murder. And previously, he would have been freaking out, not sleeping, and yet he's got this deep sense of, this is going to work out okay. I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. He is anchored at Psalm 16. We see that lived out. And I'm seeing that there. I see a greater measure of connection and fruitfulness in marriages and families as the as the business leader is becoming more present, more at rest. I'm not racing to get all this stuff done because my identity is tied up in it. I'm actually okay in walking this out and their families benefit as a result. I'm seeing increased awareness of the wisdom of God directing different strategies and resulting in miraculous turnarounds. So a company that should have been dead back in March, from every external image of what that was looking like, uh, now they have an invoice 10 times what where they were at back in March. And it truly is the grace of God in step-by-step listening to his voice, acting on that, which requires great courage, great boldness. But then I read in the book of Acts 11, where it says, was it 11? It might have been earlier than that. No, Acts 4. It's around this whole concept of who are these people and how could they do that other than they had simply spent time with Jesus. There's something about authentic time with Jesus which results in courage and confidence and wisdom. 
and a peace regardless of the circumstance. And obviously then cash flow turnaround, divine favor for expansion. We've seen some wonderful things, but I don't want to just focus on that. So things are bouncing along really, really well. And then uh, we hear God and my wife asking me some questions. And I just mentioned about, you know, how good it is. And I'm loving this and this discipleship focus through mentoring and intentional advisory. And uh, she asked this question, I think you believe in some lies around the crowd, around the large activities. And I'm, no, I'm not. And of course, I got defensive. You wouldn't have. And then it led to this uh, open, honest conversation with the Holy Spirit saying, what lies am I believing? And realizing I would believed a lie that I'm not called to influence the crowd because it's so successful over here. Why would I be doing something else? And then what's the truth? And straight away I hear him say, call the crowd, call the crowd, which is Isaiah 55, 5, a life verse of mine, by the way, which says, I will summon nations that do not know me. The people that do not know me will hasten to me because of the favor of God in my life. So I had to repent. That means change my thinking. And then if you're going to change your thinking, your behavior better follow. Otherwise, you haven't really changed your thinking. So my for me, I just immediately dived in, ran head first, got overwhelmed, and you read that in a previous episode, and then was lovingly adjusted and corrected by God. Slow down, Andy. How about you just listen to me? I have known that you've been ignoring this for a year or whatever it is. It's going to be okay. Just listen, trust, and do what I've told you to do. Well, then second part of that is I realized that me trying to find the crowd and chase the crowd and reach these unknown people somewhere out there. In the course of this, I realized a little bit of analytics, website analytics, you realize, oh, we've got 10,000 people that have visited the heavenofbusiness.com homepage in the last 30 days. I don't have to go looking for the crowd. The crowd are at my front door. And then I deal with, oh my gosh, the shame or the sense of failure of this has been here right along and I've been missing it. And do I need to repent and apologize? And all of this is this human human interaction of working with a limitless God who's actually quite okay with the process and quite okay with he speaks and you listen and learn and adjust and be quick and humble and saying, oh, Father, I missed it. Uh, you are leading me, or actually, perhaps I didn't. You were shifting and shaping me, and now you're saying, now you got that in line. Now I want you to expand, and I want you to start to reach out to this group of people who are, by the way, knocking on your door, saying, we are hungry to grow in the presence of power of God. We want to experience that more, and can you help us? And I've been just ignoring. So if you're one of those people and you've been trying to access some things, I apologize. The door's now open and we're working out how to work with you to help you grow and accelerate your experience of the presence and power of God at work. So what was the next thing I did? Well, I dived into some courses. I'm learning a ton of different things. And then I got, well, this is like two weeks now and I'm frustrated because it hasn't happened. And if there's these people, if there's 10,000 people and I've opened the door and now got got a smoother process to give them something for free, walk you through the process, give, 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 give. Well, how come they haven't signed up? And how come? And then this was driving to church on Sunday, processing with my wife and coming back to, well, God didn't promise that's all going to happen. He said, call the crowd. So have I been obedient? Well, yes, I have. Well, why don't you stop judging yourself based on the outcome and come back to, are you following what the Lord is leading? Are you listening to his voice? And this is such a good correction for me because I can so often jump into the outcome or a predetermined outcome of what I expect to happen. And when it doesn't happen, I get all frustrated and restless and irritated. That's evidence of an inferior kingdom at play. How do I know? You go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The kingdom of God is a matter of righteousness, peace, and joy. So where I am doing what's right and I have peace and I joy and joy, like I'm, I'm experiencing that in the middle, not when 
we finally attain to some standard, some number, some metric, some measure. No, right now in the process. Why? Because my salvation is secured. My eternity is locked and loaded, baby. And I get to experience God with me in the process. This is like Moses on the mountain in Exodus 33. And God says, okay, well, I'm not going to go with you guys because I'd kill you. So I'm going to send the angel of my presence with you. And and the angel is going to give you provision, protection, power, and direction. And Moses says, no deal. I don't want to achieve success, the measure, the metrics, the promise, the prophecy, whatever it is, without your presence, without the person of God with me, which means it's possible. How do I know? Because I see people that are achieving measures of success, and yet they're just as burned out, stressed out, strung out, separated and disconnected from their families as any other unbeliever. You, if you're a follower of Jesus, the distinguishing factor, you see this in Exodus 33, is how will we be distinguished from the people around us other than your presence goes with us? How do I know whose presence is with me? Peace and rest. What's rest? My identity is anchored in something already determined. When I wake up this morning, I'm already loved, accepted, and adored and connected. It doesn't mean I stop, but it means that I know that my drive comes from acceptance, comes from significance, comes from success, satisfaction already, and I get to do this, which shifts everything. I'm not driving myself with a stick. I get to do this. So I walk in a greater measure of peace, of flow, of rest, of joy. And I can measure those things around my life. So those things are happening. And here's what else. I had a dream. And so what I do real practical is I write it down in my journal. Uh, So spending time with Jesus, what does that practically look like? It looks like getting up in the morning for me, opening up my Bible, which either as a physical Bible or on my phone. And I'll use different versions because that's why I like it, because it gives you a different perspective. And I've been reading a ton of different things. Acts 11.11, as the story of Cornelius, the professional soldier who the Holy Spirit busted out on right in the beginning, which means you Gentiles, that's me and you. If you're not a Jew, you get, you're in, you're in. And, and don't call unclean what God's called it, clean. And then uh, I've been reading Psalm 34, uh, the angel of God encamps about me. Like that's like having a special forces team of teams go in front of you and go behind you and walk with you. I mean, what's that going to result in? That's going to result in boldness and courage and confidence. So I'm hearing this overarching message of boldly move forward, Andy. Don't hesitate, advance. And in the same time, I'm learning a ton. I'm learning about lead magnets and nurture sequences and how to love people really, really well. Um, Pat Flynn's book, Superfans. Uh, I'm doing a course with a lady, uh, Rebecca. I can, I'll post the link in the show notes below on, on really how to do this really, really well and keep the heart of it at the core so that I'm not transacting people, but I'm giving, giving, giving. And whether you choose to do any transaction with me or not, that what I do would add value to you even more than someone else who is selling it to you. That's the goal, is to keep delivering of significant value. So regardless of how you engage with me, your life gets better as a result. So that's what we're working forward. And then this dream. And in the dream, I was in a bowling alley. So That's like 10-pin bowling where there's a bunch of different lanes and you deliver it. And in the dream, I was buying this 10-pin bowling. And and I was thinking through, is that a good business model? Is is that a subscription? I wonder if we can turn it into a subscription. In the dream, it was a subscription model where people would pay so much per month and they get to bowl as many times as they want. And the other difference is it was lighter. I don't know if you've been to a 10-pin bowling, but usually it's really, really dark and the atmosphere is nasty. But you can get to bowl and you bowl in your lane, usually with your family or your group or your community. But the difference was it was lighter. It was more friendly and there was 
on staff a pro, a professional who is going along the lanes and just working with the different groups, helping them know how to do what they're doing better. They're still having fun. They could access that person as much as they wanted. And I wake up wondering, what on earth was that about? Well, sometimes God doesn't explain it. Well, often he doesn't explain it. He just is so okay with us working it out along the way. Wise counsel, his word that refreshes. So three days later, that was today, I suddenly have been like, God, how do I do this? You said call, or what does it look like? And as we grow this online learning platform and community, how do we do this? And I jump ahead and then after I've jumped ahead, I find that there's a new community platform feature that's coming out that's going to be 10 times better if I would just be patient. And so I look back over this and Janine and I were talking about what we can do to, you know, have guides available. And I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, the dream about that, it's it's the business. That's the business. That's the business of heaven and business, the online community and learning platform piece of it. There's different lanes. There's groups that are walking this together and there's a professional on staff that's walked it out and it's more light and more friendly. I'm like, oh, oh. So that just releases all this ideas and creativity of what we could do and how we could do that and what we could do right now before we have obviously the capacity to then employ somebody But what could we do right now to start down that lane or start down that journey of making it available where there's, we already have a live call once a week where people jump on board and we tell testimonies what God's doing and and we pray strategically. But what if there was another time where there's breakthrough prayer and it's not just us praying for you, but we activate you. That's the whole purpose. How do we activate you to do this? Don't outsource it to someone else, but we help you in this process and we activate you to pray for one another and see breakthrough. We're experiencing that. We can add that in. And then we could add this next thing in with a Q&A. And then we could, it's like, so we start to dream and realize, oh my gosh, God is into this so much more. So I trust this is kind of encouraging this messy intersection of faith, family, and business. It's not linear. It's like a straight line. It's all over the place, but I'm experiencing the joy and the delight in the process. And so if this is helpful and you're like, well, I'd love to know about more about Kingdom Business, jump onto the show notes and there's a link there to go to a Kingdom Business assessment and a one-page summary that's going to really help you. It's entirely free. It truly is. And it will help you on that journey. But what am I learning? Firstly, patience. I don't like that. I I want it now, and I'm a runner. Like, why would you be a long-distance runner when you can be a short distance? I love the outdoors, but rather than walking, I love to run trails. Why? Because you can experience it much faster. So what am I learning? Yeah, I know you're laughing at me. I'm learning that patience produces something beautiful. It's this time. It's, that I was convicted by that scripture. Peter and John... Going to the temple, they pray, this person gets healed. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, haul them in and say, Who are who do you think you are doing this? And then they realize these are unskilled, uneducated, ordinary people who became extraordinary. And it says this in the Passion Translation, because they simply spent time with Jesus. And I realized as I jumped onto this idea and oh, I could do I could do this, I could do this, I run ahead and my time with Jesus gets skinny and I'm being convicted. Andy, protect the time because it's in the time as I'm processing, as I'm listening. For Adam in the garden, it was in the cool of the day walking with God. Perhaps you do that. Go for a walk with him. Protect that time. So I'm putting that back in my calendar and I lock in and protect that time and I'm journaling and processing with God and we'll talk scripture and I write down thoughts and ideas and everything's a part of it. It's not compartmentalized. It could be the kids, it could be praying about something, it could be praying for you and it could be getting ideas. But patience is producing something beautiful. Secondly, obedience. Success is being obedient. I was talking with a friend who's a very, very good life coach and we were talking about how in the process of helping people discover their dreams and live that out don't forget 
that actually part of the process is surrendering your dreams to God. It's about obedience. Have I followed what he's asked me, invited me into doing and trust in him beyond my own ability, beyond my understanding, because that's when you get to experience the results from his perspective. So being obedient as opposed to a certain set of metrics or outcomes. Uh, Next one is repentance. I've had to repent of realizing, oh, I missed it. I have fallen short of what God had for me. That's okay, because he's made a way for this. I can quickly and humbly do that and keep myself tender. Search me, God. Know me. Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the path everlasting. And then I love this one, excellence. I'm, I'm learning excellence. I'm loving it. I, I, I wish it was all clear. You know, walking through a irresistible sales offer funnel thing, and I've been going through this course, and oh man, I wish I could just have the answers, but I don't. I've got to go step by step by step and work it out, and that's okay because in the process, as it percolates, as it's kind of meditating on it. Over weeks, it's getting clearer and clearer and clearer. And that's part of the process of excellence. It's not perfect, but I keep growing in excellence. And finally, that God is still speaking and I'm still learning to listen. And I bless you. I bless you to be on this journey, to go on the journey. This partnership with God at work never ends. And if you think you're an expert, it's probably the first step to failure hubris born of success it's like no let's stay a novice because as we do that we just continue to grow and learn and be in awe and wonder and watch what happens as things unfold not in our timing but in his and i choose to be obedient i choose to follow i choose to listen and i trust this has been of value to you hey if you want to know more jump onto heavenandbusiness.com check out the website and If you've noticed, if you've been around for a while, check out what we've done differently, particularly the Heaven and Business free dash trial page. And even you'll snoop around, you'll see different things. And shoot me your feedback, your comments. What can we do to make it better? How could we better serve you in your journey of partnering with God work and engaging in the well-being of the city you serve? What are the biggest challenges that you're facing? Let me know because I know people. I know people, that's one of my greatest gifts. And if I know somebody that's got the keys, the solutions, then I'm going to haul them onto this podcast nicely. And let's see what we can do and let's grow together. Have a great week.